Grace and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God that serves as the basis for our meditation this morning is going to be our gospel reading as we heard the angel Gabriel come to Mary. I invite you to have that open in front of you as you so you can follow along with it as we make our way through the message. I'd also direct your attention to that listening guide insert that you had in your worship folder. That might serve as a helpful tool for you. It contains a fill-in-the-blank outline of some of the main points we'll be making this morning as we meditate on the Word of our God and the fulfillment of His promises to us. Has it struck your home yet? The Christmas pixie dust that seems to be floating in the air right now? How many of you have Christmas decorations up in your home? How many of you have had them up for a couple weeks already? A few people, yeah. (laughs) Usually I am strictly like post-Thanksgiving. We are not putting up Christmas stuff until that Holiday is over, Thanksgiving is done, we've enjoyed it, then we can move to Christmas, but this year I caved. We put up some Christmas decorations a little bit early in our home, and I don't think that our family is alone because I've seen the Christmas decoratings uh, going up pretty early this year. In fact, I'm pretty sure that there were some Christmas lights intermingled with rotting jack-o'-lanterns right at the end of October already, right? People want Christmas to come, and I think in this year of all years, they are ready for that season. You know, Hobby Lobby stores and the Hallmark Movie Channel, they've always been pushing it on us. They've always been over-eager to get into that holiday season, but I think this year, there's a lot of people who are just jumping on that train nice and early. They are ready to celebrate Christmas. I think there's a reason for that. I think the the wreaths and the garland and the lights and the Christmas cookies and and the baking and, and the smells that it fills our home with, all of those things, they do tend to lift our spirits, right? And make us just a little bit more merry. And I think in 2020, we probably feel like we need that. In this year that's had so much that has pressed anxiety onto our hearts, COVID, a tumultuous election season filled and then capped off by a turbulent election, the racial tension that's ripped through our country over the course of last year. I mean, people are ready for anything that is a return to normalcy. They're they're ready for anything that can, can give them some comfort and I think Christmas for a lot of people maybe they feel that it that it does that because Christmas will come no December 25th it will be here no matter what's going on around us no matter what surrounds us it will come and, and even though our our traditions and, and how we celebrate that might be a little bit different still Christmas will come. And maybe in the year 2020, maybe 10 whole months has seemed too long to wait for Christmas. Now imagine how God's people felt. The people of Israel who had been waiting And Christmas is certain for us. We know it's coming December 25th, but for the people of Israel, there was no date attached to it. Christmas was not quite as certain. Certainly they had the promises of their God, but they were waiting for them to be fulfilled. They waited over a thousand years as God continued to give those promises. And then they they waited as they heard from the prophets and the messages that that God delivered. And then God went silent for 400 years. 
No, we think 10 months is a long time to wait. 400 years, silent, no prophets, no visions, no, no, no more dreams, no more messages from God, just wait. And then God broke the silence. He sent the angel Gabriel to be a messenger, first to Zechariah and then to Mary. This young woman from this backwater, small, insignificant town of Nazareth. And Gabriel broke God's silence. As he came to Mary, you know, Gabriel, he had the world's greatest job, didn't he? I mean, to break that silence and to proclaim the promises of God fulfilled, to, to proclaim the, these promises that were now going to be kept, to, to proclaim the coming of this king, this king who would rule with majesty and power and might. Now, Gabriel, he had the world's greatest job to announce to this young woman the fulfillment of all of God's promises. And so as we gather today, as we think about how Gabriel came to a, announce the coming of that king who would come as a light into the world, a hammer of light that would crush and shatter all the darkness of sin, let's listen again to those words with new wonder and joy. Let's step back in time and recognize this amazing fulfillment that Gabriel brought. And let's allow that to make sure that as we think about this coming season and, and the comfort that it maybe brings to us and to our hearts and our minds, that, that we don't base that comfort on some shifting foundation, but we base it on the enduring foundation of Christ and his kingdom. That, that amidst all of the, the nostalgia and the sights and the sounds and the smells that we love at this time of year, that you also recognize the king that you have. The king who is coming, whose kingdom is well worth the wait. And allow Gabriel's words to Mary to become God's words to you. Starting with those very first words as Gabriel said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was startled. She was perplexed. She wonder what kind of greeting this could possibly be. That's understandable, right? When an angel of the Lord appears, I mean, you have to imagine that Mary was wondering what possibly could this messenger, this angel of God Almighty want with me? A young girl whose, whose biggest dream at the moment was her marriage to Joseph, her carpenter husband. I don't know about you, but I think I'd be pretty startled. Oh, Mary, she was a human being just like you and me, which meant that she was a sinful human being. And even though the Bible doesn't give us like a long laundry list of Mary's failures and her sins and the guilt that she felt, she knew it. She understood it just like each of us knows our own. And so I have to imagine that if an angel of the Lord appeared before me, that, that my question after a greeting would be, what's coming next? Like, what accusation is going to be there, uh, that accusation against my character that I can't possibly defend? What deep, dark, hidden secret that I've tried to bury away is going to be exposed? What condemnation am I going to feel? But Gabriel didn't come 
to accuse or condemn. No, Gabriel had the world's greatest job. He came to talk about the grace of God. He came to talk about forgiveness. And he says that in those words to Mary. When he says, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and you will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. And with that name, Gabriel announced God's grace and mercy. You know, parents, they, they really think about the name that they're going to give to their children, right? They, they think about all, all the meaning that could be associated with that name or how it connects to their family members. My brother and sister-in-law, they're expecting right now in, in January. And I know that they've spent lots of time thinking about names. What are they going to name their baby? And so when the Son of God came into the world, God chose his name for a reason. There was meaning behind that name. When, when, Angel, when Gabriel told Mary to name him Jesus, that meant something because Jesus means the Lord saves. This baby came to save sinners from their sins. This baby came to this as I talked about with the kids, to take on our humanity, our flesh, and our blood so that he could go to the cross and by the grace of God unleash forgiveness for the world. This baby also came to be a king. Gabriel continued, he said, he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will have no end. The very fact that the king was coming, this was good news for the people of Israel. We just finished up our worship series, our sermon series on the book of Judges and we saw how when God's people had no leader, no ruler to lead and to guide them, then everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Evil was rampant. It took over their hearts and their minds. And so God's people, they desired a king. They cried out for a king. And partially, partially that was a very sinful desire because they had rejected and deposed the Lord as king and ruler over their hearts. But they also wanted a king to provide peace and order and rule and stability. They wanted a king to protect them. And God had delivered some honorable men who, who served well as kings, but by and large, for the most part, the kings that had served in Israel's history, they had failed. They fell hard into immorality and idolatry. And so God's people were still waiting they waited and they waited and they waited for this true king that God had promised. But maybe they waited for the wrong thing. Maybe they waited for an earthly king and not the king that God had promised to send. I mean, you see that tension throughout Jesus' life, right? You see those people who truly wanted to believe, they wanted to accept that Jesus was the Christ. He was the chosen and the anointed one sent from God himself, but they limited their idea of the Christ to those earthly problems they wanted solved. They felt they had physical maladies that needed to be corrected. But as we listen to Gabriel's language, as he tells us how Jesus will be great, how he will be the Son of the Most High, how he is the Son of God, Gabriel's language points us to see how this King, Jesus, would solve our greatest need. And our greatest problem, he would solve 
our spiritual need. And I think we struggle with that tension too. Now, how much more are we fearful of the implications of COVID-19 on our bodies and what that might mean for suffering and potentially even death. But we're more fearful about that than we are about the implications of sin in our hearts and the eternal death to which that leads. And how much more do we grumble and complain about the quarantines and the isolations and the inconveniences to our life caused by this worldwide pandemic than we really take inventory of the incredible inconvenience of sin and the eternal isolation away from our God that that would thrust upon us. How much more are we simply just ready for 2020 to be over so that we can get to a new year? Then that we are excited for Jesus to come again and usher in a, a new kingdom and a new world, one where this life of sorrow and suffering and pain will be completely gone. How much more do we feel the fear, the anxiety, maybe even the joy, maybe even celebration over a new president taking office in January? Then we are fearful of the rule that sin might take over our own hearts. Or that we celebrate how our King Jesus may come to usher in a new kingdom. One in which we have peace and joy because of his rule and his reign. I think, I think we struggle too with our view of the Christ. And so Gabriel's words, they push us to truly reflect on who our king is to truly reflect on the rule that he brings into our lives, to truly reflect on the grace of our God shown to us through this Jesus, this Son of the Most High, so that we can look forward to when the power of the Most High is going to overshadow this entire world and call his chosen, his favored children back to his arms and to their eternal home. You know, Gabriel had the world's greatest job. As he reminds us that Jesus' kingdom is eternal. That Jesus' kingdom will last forever. All other rulers and all other kingdoms, their time is temporal. They will end, but Jesus' kingdom endures. And Gabriel reminds us that by the grace of God, we are a part of that kingdom. Yes, we wait for it. We wait for that kingdom, but we wait with a confidence and a joy in the promises of God fulfilled that brings comfort and it brings peace even to our present circumstances. As we look back and we see these promises of God fulfilled once and long ago, we know that those promises of God, they will be fulfilled again in the future. And so we can trust in those promises. We can trust that there's going to be no end to what Jesus brings us. There will be no end to the peace that Jesus brings you. There will be no end to the protection Jesus gives you. There will be no end to the shield that Jesus places before you and keeps you safe from all harm and danger. There will be no end to his kingdom. And so it truly is a kingdom that is well worth the wait. We call this church season that we're in right now, we call it Advent. It comes from a Latin word that means coming. And, and we, so we look at the comings of Jesus. We celebrate his coming long ago as that little baby, what Gabriel announced 
We celebrate his coming into our hearts through faith. We also look forward to his coming again. And there is a tension in that. Because right now we do struggle. We do face challenges. Right? We, we wrestle with our own weaknesses. We struggle with a sinful nature inside of us. We have to deal with the viruses and the diseases of this world, and we have to live under imperfect governments. There are challenges that we face. And such things can take away our peace. Such things can cause anxiety. Such things can lead us maybe even to wonder how can God's promises truly be fulfilled when everything around me says that they won't, when everything around me seems to tell me that it's going to take a miracle for God's promises to come true. How can you have confidence then? How can you trust as you wait? Well, Gabriel's words remind you that your God can do the miraculous. Your God has done the miraculous. And your God, he will fulfill his promises. We wait for a kingdom that is well worth that wait. I think everyone in America right now is ready for Christmas to be here. Uh, they're ready for the normalcy. They're ready for the certainty that that season brings. They're ready for all the comfort that comes from the sights and the sounds and the smells. And that, that's why we're putting up our lights. That's why we're getting the decorations out. That's why we're starting to do the baking. That's why we're lighting the candles. Whatever we're doing to fill our home with that comfort. But if nostalgia is all that we have, if just that, that momentary feeling of normalcy and, and the structured and the routine, if that is all that we have, if that's all that Christmas brings, Christmas may very likely fail you. It may fail you when January comes and COVID's still here, cancer still attacks your body. The political scene still isn't what you want it to be. Christmas might fail you. But it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to if you recognize that Christmas points you to your king who came once ago, long ago and is coming again. Your true king, Jesus, the son of the Most High. And as you celebrate his rule and his reign, as you celebrate that his kingdom is well worth the wait, it'll fill you with incredible peace as you celebrate God's grace to you, his favor to you. Gabriel had the world's greatest job. And for this moment, right now, I have the world's greatest job. To repeat those words of Gabriel to you, to tell you, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. And to remind you of everything that that means, that your king is coming today, I have the world's greatest job, and so do you. You see, as far as I know, God doesn't send the angel Gabriel to young girls or older women or, or middle-aged fathers or struggling men. Uh, to my knowledge, God is not filling this world with prophets who have direct revelations from him to bring a new message. He, he hasn't inspired writers to, to start writing out his own words but God certainly hasn't gone silent. He brings his message of grace and truth still today. And he wants to bring it through you. He wants to send you as his messenger. 
to announce to those that you meet, to announce to your friends, your family, this amazing message of God's grace and favor shown to them in the King who has come, in the kingdom for which we wait, a kingdom that is well worth the wait. Amen.